Tyree. So I'm curious, obviously you played a, a number of different spots, defended some bigger guys a, a year ago. You guys have more size in the program this year. How do you see your role uh, potentially changing? Um, I honestly think my role going to stay the same. I know that um, we got more pieces and uh, more size this year, but uh, my goal is to still help to do what I got to do to help the team to win. And Coach was asked a little bit about um, just because we don't know what's going to happen with COVID with maybe somebody getting taken out of a game or out for a week, uh, the importance of versatility. Obviously, you're a guy who's been pretty versatile. When you look around your teammates, do you feel like they're guys who can play multiple spots? Um, yeah. Um, I feel like every player on this team can play more than one position, and that's what's so dominant about our team. Thank you. Go ahead, go ahead next. Uh, good morning. Uh, uh, Kevin, um, obviously, uh, this will be your first season actually playing for the Hokies after sitting out. Um, what, um, uh, for the fans who haven't seen you play yet, what do you feel you kind of can bring to the table for this team, and, and how ready do you feel to make that jump from the Southern Conference uh, to the ABCC? Uh, I think I just bring uh, relentless, um, relent relentless uh, activity. Um, just nonstop, uh, crashing the glass, uh, just helping the team win, diving on loose balls. Uh, that's what I want to try and bring. Uh, Tyrese, have you been working on any aspects of your game, specifically in terms of, of uh, you know, where do you see your any progress in your game from last season to this season? Um, yeah, I've been working on my game, uh, more of my jump shot, but uh, we have a whole new team, so I've been working on uh, building that chemistry and uh, everything off the court and also on the court. Thank you. Hey guys, uh, this is for both of you. Tyrese, I'll start with you. Um, obviously, you, after everything happened in March, um, you guys were a away from Blacksburg for a while. What did you learn most about yourself basketball-wise and then about yourself off the court in that time you were just away from Virginia Tech? Um, honestly, it's just that uh, if you, the athlete that you say you are, you're going to find a way to work. Uh, even if it's um, uh, borrowing the key to somebody's gym or going outside, running a couple miles or anything, it's just you find that um, a hidden talent. And that's called, like, I guess work. Um, knowing that you can't get into your school gym or anything like that because of something that's going around. Um, just don't let that stop your work at it. Find something to get into to uh, keep you focused and take your game to the next level. Hey guys, I'm going to the same thing. I know it's been pretty hard um, in the past couple months. What has been kind of the silver lining for you guys and the, the most rewarding part, I guess, aside from the season getting started that you guys have found during this? difficult time. You know, I'm just excited that, you know, it's all starting to come together. Not that it's all going to be perfect, but just that, like, at least we have games scheduled and things are starting to progress. So just being excited that it's starting to come together. Um, and I'm going to pick up from where he left off at. Like he said, um, we're excited to just see everything fall in line. Um, at first, everybody was just lost in the wind, not knowing if the season is going to be here or not. Or, um, they just didn't know what was going on, and it's just good to see that um, everything just falling into its place. Um, and Coach also says that he it's hard for him to think three or four games in advance, obviously, because you just don't know if those are guaranteed. How do you guys just try, try to have the same mindset and not think to the next game after? Because it's hard not to do, especially when you have a big one coming up on your schedule. Um. Honestly, without uh, us being in these times uh, with the, the virus or whatever, it's still kind of hard to think about the next game because every night is competition, so you can't just skip one game. You got to make sure that game is secured and uh, well studied and, um, and executed before you move on to the next game. Next time someone doing more Kevin, you, you and um, 
you and Coach kind of made your transition into the ACC together. I, I didn't know if maybe in your year out if there was something that he really specifically wanted you to watch and study as you kind of got to know the personnel and the teams and the, the, the style of play in the ACC. <clears throat> um, well, just the main thing that I worked on um, that year was just being aggressive. There were some times when I didn't really shoot a lot or wasn't that confident. Um, so just working on that and just trying to be the best um, me that I can be for the team. How do you kind of see, I mean, obviously we, we got a feel for what kind of player you were um, when you were at Wofford. Do you get a, I mean, do you get a sense that you can be um, you know, that, that same sort of role for this team or, or do you think your role changes a little bit? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to put any labels on anything, but uh, it, it changes a little bit. Um, but I think just doing whatever needs to be done and not really worrying about how many points I score every night or anything like that. So. Right. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. David, David Teal. This is for, for both of you. How closely did you follow the NBA bubble? And have you talked among yourselves about what it will be like to compete in front of few, if any, fans, depending on the venue? You want me to get it? Yeah. Um, I, I, we haven't really talked much about it, um, but I know that the fans definitely, I don't know if they make the game, but that atmosphere, uh, nothing can recreate that. Um, so not having them, it'll definitely be different. Um, but I, I'm interested to see how it how it all plays out. Same. Um, the fans, we know, um, they still gonna be supporting us the same. We just gotta uh, go out there like like they actually there and keep playing and give them something to watch over the TV or you know just that faith with them. Anybody wants to ask a question? Fire away. Yeah, uh, either or both of you gentlemen give me a, a scouting report on Cartier. What, what does he do well? What does he bring to your lineup? Uh, I can say that I don't want to give you too much because, uh, you know, they got other ears there. <laughs> uh, but all I can say is, is uh, He's a he's an outstanding player. He um, does all the extra stuff that you need him to do, and he gets the job done. Athlete. He's a very uh, crazy athlete. Also. Uh, Tyrese, uh, you know, do you expect this to be to be better than it was last year? And in what certain ways might it be better than it was last year? Um, I can I can answer. Well, I can say that we have more pieces than last year uh, definitely um, more talent also just by having more pieces but I mean both teams had the same objective and I was to go out there and compete at the high level and uh, just uh, have a winning season and that's going to be the same goal this year this is for either of y'all but um what can y'all tell me, how has Coach been coaching during a pandemic than he has over the last year? And uh, key, key for you, at, just at Wofford, too, how much has he changed just from previous years to this year? Um, I don't know if he's really changed much. Um, he's still kind of the same guy, jokes around with us, um, but definitely gets on us and wants us uh, to be the best that we can be. Um, so I don't know if he's really changed that much. And he, to me, he's the same old guy from last year. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Ty, you you guys have five or seven leading scores back. You obviously lose a lot with Landers transferring. Who kind of picks up that slack? I mean, obviously, Cartier's got a pretty good prep for being able to put the ball in the, in the hole. Is, is he the, the main guy you think can kind of pick up that slack? And we know Joe can shoot a little bit. Um, it, will it be spread some, or is there a guy that you think you can sort of rely on to pick up that, that slide? Uh, um, honestly, there's no um, 
particular person or a specific person that's going to do that. I feel like as a team and uh, as we continue to learn how to play with each other, um, those ex those points will get picked up, you know, uh, just by sharing the ball and playing fluently. And that's, that's just the, um, the main point is just playing together and not worry about um, going out there scoring 30 or 15, just going out there playing ball, not only because you love it, it's just because, you know, you have fans that's there for you and um, a staff, an organization that got your back. So why not play, you know, to, to you know, all your energy going out your body? Well, just why not? <laughs> Uh, Kevin, uh, we, um, uh, how about you break it down the games? We haven't seen much play, obviously, in, in Blacksburg or, or Pemso. Uh, what have you observed about what they bring to the each of them bring to the table uh, since you guys have been practicing? Uh, what was the first name? Uh, Mutz and Pemso. I mean, what, what, what can you tell people about uh, what, what they'll bring to the table for Tech this year? Um, both are definitely skilled players. Um, guarding them every day is helping me get better, too. Um, I, one of them is athletic. Um, one of the, the other one's super savvy. Um, so, but they're both really good players. So, who, who's who there? What are you referring to there? I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Keep your eyes on the show. Well, Bees, I'm, I'm curious uh, how you think your role might change with, with Cartier there. Do you think you guys will play on the floor at the same time? Um, or would you spell each other? What, what do you see kind of happening this year? Um, I feel like Coach and I play us a lot together. Um, my world wouldn't change. I'm still going to be the leader of the team. Still going to push everybody to be the greatest that they can be. Um, Cardi is there just to help all of us become better as a team together. So I think we've complement each other well. We've been doing that very well in practice. So I just can't wait to play with him in the game now. You uh, have added a bunch of size to this roster. Obviously, that was something you guys had to kind of overcome the last year. Um, how much better do you think you'll be, or how different do you think you'll be because you have some of that size? Uh, of course, uh, rebounding will help us. Uh, that was one of our key struggles last year, so rebounding will be helpful for, uh, in our favor now. Um, so I think that's just the biggest thing from last year, just being able to rebound because our size and everything. And Hunter, could you just give me a, a scouting report on Cardia? What does he do well? Uh, yeah, Cardia's a great guy on and off the court. He's definitely going to help our team win this year. He's a quick guard and kind of just being an older guy coming in and helping the younger guys out just like on the mental side of the game and also just he's physically gifted. Thank you. Next. Uh, well, basically, let's uh, to follow up on that. You know, give us your impressions of what uh, Cartier uh, Jada brings to the table for you guys and also uh, what, what about uh, Joe Bama still's caught your eye so far? Mm -hmm. uh, so about Cardi, he's a seasoned vet. He's been to the wars and everything. He's been to the Elite Eight, so he knows what the battle's about. So I just know his transition between the Big 12 to the ACC will be smoothly. Um, I'm not worried about him. His confidence through the roof. That's what I love about Cardi. Um, and then for Joe, um, just watch out. There's something that's all I got to say. Just watch out for your head. Don't try to block him. Just, that's all I got to tell the rest of the ACC before you be on a poster. <laughs> Watch out for your head, you said? Yeah, watch out for your heads for all the ACC picks up there because he will try you multiple <laughs> times. Uh, Hunter, um, uh, obviously with Landers gone, he was your team's latest tour last year. Uh, well, you know, who's, who's, do you think is going to be the, the go-to guy this year? Uh, I think that's what's good about our team is we don't really have a go-to guy. Any night, someone can go for 20 points. And so that's what I think what makes us dangerous is you really don't know who's going to go out and strike that night. And I think that's what makes us good is we don't really, each game we're not going into and saying this person's got to get this many shots up or this many points. It's just we go out there and play our game and whoever is hot that night is hot. Thank you. David Cunningham. Hey, guys. Um, the, the, I got a question for both of you. I just want to know, um, in mm -hmm. the time you guys were away from basketball, we saw, Mike said you were uh, still in Blacksburg, but I want to know what you guys learned most about yourself, both on and off the basketball court um, during the pandemic before you guys uh, started practice back up. Yeah, during the quarantine, I picked up a lot of good habits. I started reading a lot more. Uh, I like I said, I started learning how to cook. That was the biggest thing. Uh, but relying off team meals was kind of struggling during that quarantine time. So 
learn how to cook, um, call my mom, um, ask my sister questions, my dad some questions. So I think that's just the biggest thing, just asking them how to be able to cook and how to be able to provide for myself. So that's the biggest thing I learned throughout those couple of months is how to provide on my own, uh, just be able to live on my own, see what I can do. And I thought I did well, so I'm using these habits that I learned throughout those four months and just using them for the rest of my life. Yeah, well, same question to Hunter. Uh, what what did you learn about yourself both on and off the court in, in this time that you know you were you were kind of away from basketball? Yeah, definitely learned a lot about myself off the court. You know, you just have a lot more time in the house, and not everything wasn't so busy. So it, like the day seemed a lot longer. So the biggest thing for me was just forming relationships like with my family, just talking to my mom and dad more, and my brother and sister. And then also just learning about my body, just nutrition and working out and stuff like that. And then also just watching film and breaking down the game. So you just had a lot more time just to really figure out what you needed to get better at. And then on the court was just working out, trying to find ways to get better. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Lance. Jimmy Robertson. Yeah, well, basically, I'm curious you've been here for uh, all time and then seeing a lot and there are a lot of new faces on this team. I was just wondering how's the how's the chemistry been with all these new faces? Uh it's good. Um of course all chemistry doesn't that's all good chemistry doesn't like happen in one day. So we're building each other day by day and that's what I like about this team. We're growing together. Um we're just pushing each other each and every day. So that's the biggest thing when we we able to translate that to the court, good things will happen. So I'm very excited with this team. Uh, well, Gleason, just to follow up on that, I guess, will you, do you, will you beat teams in different ways this year? Will you play it, play it all different? Will you look at all differently on the court this year? You know, with this group of char characters, uh, you know, how will that kind of affect how you uh, try to attack teams this year? Uh, the biggest thing is everybody has one year of more experience. So the young guys, like all the freshmen last year. They weren't in those type of wars that they were in high school. So now, learning to be able to the whole last year, they'd be able to learn what happened, what they went wrong during those close games that we um, lost. And now they can um, not do the same mistakes and like move on. And we're gonna win those games and close it out this year, I believe. So we have more seasoned vets that not understand the game. They're more seasoned to understand uh, what's going on, like what time and score and everything. So I think that's the big thing. Everyone's more experienced. So that's just the biggest thing uh, with the team from last year. We have more experience. Uh, Hunter, you guys won seven ACC games last year. If you're if you're going to win more ACC games this year, uh, where does the improvement have to come from? And, and uh, how confident are you that you, know, you guys can, can do that and, and whatever where you're referring to there? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just staying consistent. You know, we started out strong last year and then kind of hit a wall, and then from there we just couldn't get back on that. So the biggest thing is just going to be once if we do take a loss or two in a row, is how we're going to respond and get back and not let it keep like a domino effect and keep get, having those losses. And I think we just have a lot more depth and talent this year, so it will help us a lot more. So you say you, you learned uh... – Cooking in, in the quarantine off season. Yeah. What's the best thing you make? Uh, so throughout the off season, I kind of went on a new diet. I went kind of vegan for a couple months, and that helped change my body. So I kind of like that wave I was doing. So I'm now more like, I was during the time period I was vegan. I was kind of craving chicken wings the whole time, but <laughs> I was kind of good with everything else. I haven't had red meat for a while. I haven't had turkey or anything else, but so I added back like chicken thighs and like. That's all I added back. But other than that, if I have grilled chicken and everything, but the best thing I make, I think, is, I don't know, like, you can say a baked, uh, baked chicken with rice and my vegetables with broccoli and everything. So I have a lot of, like, more plants in my meals and everything, and all my meals with, like, some rice and, like, lentils, uh, beans. It's very creative, the stuff I added. I've been watching a lot of all the pros that have been turning to that plant-based wave, so I kind of, I enjoyed entering that um, wave as well. Sounds good. And Coach mentioned you know, the idea that NCAA eligibility rules have kind of changed and that this year yeah. could potentially count. Do yeah. you have interest in coming back for an extra season? Um, I, like I told me, Coach talked about it a few times. Uh, I told him we would reconnect back in like March when the season over everything. So I can't make a decision now because 
it's November, so I don't want to place anything, or he doesn't want to place anything. So we just talked about it. We're like, yeah, we both know what the rule is. And we're going to connect with each other again back in March, and I think we, have, we should have a great conversation about that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And, uh, this, this question I'm, for both of you there, um, you obviously mm -hmm. with Stephen football, you know, obviously they've got large rosters and they've had games, you know, different schools have had to cancel football games because of COVID. Uh, in basketball, obviously, you got a much smaller roster, so, you know, obviously someone you know, testing positive could really affect the whole team there and, and uh, cause games to get wiped out or people get quarantined and so forth. How are you as players kind of approaching this season uh, knowing that, you know, you know, trying to uh, – Avoid getting COVID because of obviously how much you could throw a monkey wrench into the into the schedule there. Uh, yeah, our medical staff has done a good job of just talking to us about protocols and what we have to follow and do. So we've been really trying to work hard at that and um, also just staying prepared. We all know like what we're going through right now and anything can happen. So all of us are just staying prepared and uh, whatever happens, if we have to miss a couple games or someone has to miss a couple games, people are gonna have to step up and play. Agree with that. Hey, Lisa, I'm curious, um, what were your first impressions were when the when the ACC schedule was released a few days ago? How much more excited did that make you for, for this season, especially with a graphic with your face on it? <laughs> I was happy. Um, yeah, I was just happy because you know, being a senior, being in this league, it's just with well, everything going on, you never know what's going to happen. So I was extremely happy seeing the schedule, all 20 of the games, all 20 of the games. So. I can't wait to go out there and go play and give my all. Yeah, um, guys, I noticed on your masks that you, you, know, you guys are wearing the logo with um, Mike Young's nonprofit, My Turn. I, I don't think we talked about it this morning. Apologies if we did, but you can talk about how you know the, the team is involved in in that. Uh, you know, that adventure, okay. that, that project with Mike Young and how you guys are kind of helping him with, uh, with tackling bullying? Uh, yeah, he uh, wanted to do something for his dad that passed away, so he started an anti-bullying foundation. And I personally was involved and helped out. I know me, Naheem, and Big John read to some elementary school kids a book just about bullying and just having fun with it. We were on a Zoom call and was just reading it to them, and the kids were having a great time. So I think the biggest thing is just connecting with the community and letting them know, like, people with us that they look up to, like, are there for them and have a voice for them.